On June 4, 1987, there lived a father by the name of Gabriel Amorth. He is the chief exorcist of the Vatican. He prepares himself for an exorcism of a boy who is showing all classical signs of possession by malevolent evils. The family tells him that they consulted many many doctors for the boy's treatment, however, nothing works so Father Amorth is called. Before going into the room, he asks the family to pray for the kid. He enters his room and clearly, the bloodshot eyes and his demonic mumblings indicate that he is indeed possessed. Father Gabriel then asks, if he is so powerful, then why possess some random person and not a stronger host? The evil entity replies proudly saying that he can possess anyone. The pig is then brought inside the house and Gabriel mocks him saying that he is a nobody and cannot even possess a pig. But it is all a trick by Father Gabriel because as soon as he leaves the boy's body, the pig is shot dead and the mission is accomplished. Father Gabriel calms the boy for the devil is exorcised, the scene then shifts to a scene in Spain where Julia Vasquez, along with her daughter Amy and son Henry travels to their new house. After their long travels, they arrive at their newly inherited mansion. Amy seems dissatisfied as she is not used to the place. Their talk is interrupted as Carlos, one of the workers comes and introduces Father Thomas. As Amy tries to chill in the house Henry tries to prank her by wearing a devil mask he found in the basement. She does not appreciate the joke and tells him not to bother her and to explore the house on his own. While exploring the house, Henry spots a crack in the wall, and from inside, he sees a strange rock with symbols. Upstairs, Julia begs Amy to cooperate with her and not make her life miserable as they do not have anything except for the inheritance from her deceased husband. She tells Amy to hold on until they manage to sell the place then they will go back to their home in America. Meanwhile, Father Gabriel is called to Rome, for questioning as he has performed an exorcism without the approval of the bishop. He tries to make excuses and tells Cardinal Sullivan that it was not an exorcism, but merely a mental illness and that what he did was just a psychology trick. He defends himself saying that most of the work given to him does not even require exorcism. Bishop Lumumba then tells Cardinal Sullivan that it is true as 98% of the assigned cases are referred to doctors by Father Gabriel. As for the 2%, those are the real cases of evil. Father Gabriel is a practical man. And seeing him berated like this, he gets to the main point of what they want from him. Cardinal Sullivan then informs him that the Congregation of Doctrine of Faith recommended that the position of chief exorcist be formally abolished as they believe it is an outdated belief. Father Gabriel asks the man if evil does not exist, then what is the purpose of the church? He warns them that the Congregation of Faith looks like they want the church to lose their jobs. He gets angry and tells the cardinals that he is anointed as chief exorcist of the Vatican by his bishop, the Pope himself. If they have a problem with him then they have to talk to the Pope. And so he left the place without hearing any more of their questions. Going back to the mansion, Julia hears strange noises in the place and he goes out of her room to investigate but sees nothing. The workers also found a hole in the wall, but a flame burst forth. Carlos tells Julia that they cannot continue working in such a dangerous place and he gets back all his men back in Henry's room, he is seen convulsing badly. He seems to calm down but his next words terrify the two as he tells them that they are going to die. When he gets taken to the hospital, the doctors inform Julia that all the tests, x-rays, MRI, blood tests, and spinal tests show nothing wrong with the kid. Julia says it is impossible that nothing is wrong because he was convulsing badly when they saw him. The doctor inquires if he has had any deep trauma before, to which Julia replies that his father died recently. The doctors, finding nothing wrong physically, recommend a psychiatrist. They go back home and Julia tries to talk to the consul to give her any assistance that she could get. Suddenly, the lights go off and Henry gets up from his bed. Amy goes downstairs to switch the breakers on, and when he gets back, Henry is talking in a deep voice grabbing Julia's breast and saying that he never gets to breastfeed. He grins evilly, showing a mark on his abdomen, and tells them to bring them the priest. So they ask Father Thomas but he is thrown outside by an invisible force and evil Henry swears that it is the wrong freaking priest, in Rome, Gabriel meets the Pope. He is doing well unlike what Cardinal Sullivan said about him being mentally unstable. He says Cardinal Sullivan and the younger generation do not understand the devil. He commends Father Gabriel for all his work expelling evil from wherever he goes. But a case of evil in Spain troubles the Pope and he asks Gabriel to go investigate. He fears something sinister there that only Gabriel can solve, and so, Father Gabriel rides on his motorbike to Julia's place. He first meets with Father Thomas who is shocked that a person of his stature is going to help him in this case. 
He tells him he read articles about Father Gabriel, Father Thomas happily introduces Father Gabriel to Julia who tells her that Father Gabriel is the best help the church could offer. But Julia is still skeptical and asks why the church is getting involved. She only wants her son to be well. Father Gabriel says he will see the kid and try to help. Father Gabriel enters Henry's room and tries to greet him. But Henry does not respond. He gets a chair to recite a prayer. Suddenly, Henry wakes and tells the priest that his prayers are worthless in that place. This is proven true when Father Gabriel uses his medallion which usually repels evil, however, it does not work on Henry and just reveals his demon eyes. He interviews the demon and asks his name and other evil background before he banishes him. But the demon possessing Henry seems to have a different purpose. He specifically wants Father Gabriel. He says he knows everything about Gabriel and all of his sins, and that God is not in that place to protect him. The cross fell from the wall and the evil Henry mocks him saying he does not know who he's dealing with. Father Gabriel tries the trick he did at the beginning of the movie, however, evil Henry gets really offended and says he's not some stupid to get inside a pig. Evil Henry says his name itself is a nightmare, to which Father Gabriel scoffs that his nightmare is France winning the World Cup. Evil Henry says he cannot hide from his corny jokes forever and he utters his name. A flashback then shows a young Gabriel during the World War where all of Gabriel's comrades were killed and he hides himself among the dead like a coward. He then vomits a bird from his mouth and says he will be waiting for Gabriel. And the priest backs away from the room. Father Gabriel then tells Father Thomas that the demon knows things that it shouldn't know. Indicating that this demon is in a higher hierarchy than regular demons. He also informs Julia that this very very dangerous entity could be fatal to Henry. Only faith can help them. Julia then describes the accident from when his husband passed away, Henry was with him. This event could be the main gateway for the demon to possess Henry. And suffering can make an innocent person vulnerable. Father Gabriel assures her that he will never abandon him and his child. Meanwhile, Amy hears knocking on doors. He goes to Henry's room who scares her away. Just then, she hears the telephone ringing. From the other side, she hears her father's voice who says they are all going to die. She panics and goes frantically to tell her mother about the call. Father Gabriel then prepares himself as the demon is very strong. He tells Father Thomas that they have to know the demon's name before they can exorcise it. To arm themselves, they have to be free from their sins and must confess their sins. The two priests then go to Henry's room to start the ritual. Evil Henry tries to distract Father Gabriel by reminding him of his past. But Gabriel just calmly asks Evil Henry whom he wants to be vanquished by, Jesus or his mother. They then start their prayers to exorcise Evil Henry. At first, it seems to work out and Evil Henry convulse, seemingly affected by the prayer. Suddenly, the lights go out. Just then, a woman named Rosaria appears in front of Father Gabriel and blames her for her death. Evil Henry wakes up and tells them what an exhilarating experience it was. He then exposes Father Tomas sin as a panty sniffer and that he fricked someone's daughter named Adela. Father Gabriel warns the agitated Thomas not to let his emotions get the better of him and concentrate. The two priests then get away to regroup as the evil is much stronger than they initially thought. At the same time, in Rome, the Pope gets records of the Abbey. Father Gabriel then goes to talk with Father Thomas, who confesses that Adela was the love of her life who asked him to leave the priesthood to be with her. But his love for God outweighs his love for the girl. Gabriel tells him that the Almighty God forgives him for his sins. He also asks about Rosaria, the one shown to Father Gabriel. He tells Thomas that she was someone whom she could have saved but sadly, passed away. He says the demon can sense their guilt and can know memories that no one knows about and it can use it against them. Gabriel ushers him that they must hurry and get rid of the demon before he takes Henry with him. He shows him a passage in an old Bible and tells him to memorize it. A prayer is more powerful in Latin, suddenly, he remembers what evil Henry told him about taking the bait. So Gabriel realizes that the demon is not after Henry, instead is planning something much more sinister. Father Gabriel then goes outside the garden to inspect something that he saw. He sees a well with the seal of the Vatican. Father Thomas then enters Henry's room. He holds his hands but evil Henry wakes up and bites his ears off, Amy is also not spared as she gets thrown across the room. The demon terrorizes her and she hides inside the wardrobe. Outside, Gabriel opens the well and sends a lightened handkerchief down it. A fire explosion occurs after this. He gets back inside and rescues Julie who is getting swallowed by her bed. They also rescue Amy by reciting a prayer that immediately stops the evil. Because the demon is getting stronger, Gabriel asks Thomas to take the two to the chapel. He then shows Thomas the well which shows the skulls and the mark of the Spanish Inquisition. They inspect the basement again and get to the hole in the wall. 
He smashes the wall and they open a door showing them the full extent of the hidden catacomb, inside, they see a sealed corpse of the cardinal who is supposed to be the last protector of the place. Although he looks like he is in a metal cage, it is in fact for his protection against evil. They do that when an exorcism fails and seals the place to prevent demons from escaping. Unbeknownst to them, the Pope reads a letter that says under the abbey, a great evil is sealed. After every attempt at exorcism, they could not vanquish the demon. But it is too late as the two priests get the keys to open the gates. They go deeper inside and smell the sulfur getting stronger signaling that they are closer to hell. They see another corpse, the Friar de Ojada who is considered to be the strongest exorcist of all time. Gabriel retrieves a journal from its chest that tells of a demon who possessed monks and was able to do multiple possessions. Finally, it possessed Friar de Ojada who is said to be the one who started the Spanish Inquisition. This means, that every torture and persecution done from that point onward, are done in the name of God by a priest possessed by the devil, upstairs, Julie wakes up and finds her daughter laughing. The two talk in unison, both possessed by the devil. Julie grabs her daughter but she is sent flying and the two are strangled by an invisible hand. Meanwhile, the two priests find more proof that the demon is planning on raising an army by finding the 200 demons buried on earth and destroying God's work. They finally figure out the name of the devil. His name is Asmodeus, the king of hell. The two connected the dots that the devil just lured Gabriel to that place to feed on him and do the same thing he did with Friar de Ojada to infiltrate the church. But they have the name of the devil, they know that it is possible to defeat him. Before going into the final battle, Father Gabriel confesses his sins. After the war, he followed God's will but during the case of Rosaria, he did not believe in her thinking she was only mentally ill. After her death, Gabriel is consumed by the guilt of not having been able to help her. Father Thomas absolves him of his sins, and finally, they are ready. They enter Henry's room, where they notice that his eyes are now bloodshot. Evil Henry asks the two priests if they are done confessing. But everyone ignores him and they all recite prayers. Everyone gets shown illusions of their guilt, starting from Gabriel with Rosaria. But Gabriel breaks from it and recites more powerful prayers to release the child. Evil Henry chimes in saying that he wants to be inside Gabriel, or else they will all die. Finally, everything calms down. Henry is in charge of the body but he is suffering greatly. Then Amy also gets possessed and climbs up the wall. She attacks everyone while evil Henry tells Gabriel to give up his body. Father Thomas is also incapacitated and is getting hanged by his own scarf. So without any more choice left, Gabriel asks the devil to take him instead. The attacks immediately stop and Henry is no longer possessed. However, Gabriel's body is now taken over by the demon. The evil Gabriel goes down the basement towards the catacomb. He sits there saying that Thomas is too late to save his friend. But Thomas still believes that Gabriel is still inside and he urges him to resist. He tortures the two of them but they fought recite prayers to seal the evil. Gabriel congratulates the two of them for finally vanquishing evil. After his mission, Gabriel goes back to the Vatican with Thomas to meet with the Pope. Everything goes well and the Pope thanks them both for their work. The church bought the abbey from the Vasquez family and everyone is recovering. Father Gabriel continues serving the church and the movie ends. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.